32nd board, let's drop the gate on hot topics in the sport. Uh, this one is too hot, too hot to touch. Too many guys got hurt in Nashville again. So last year, that race cost us Jason Anderson, Justin Barsha, Cooper Webb. This year, we lost Garrett Marchbanks right off the start in a heat race, and that unfortunately set the dominoes going. Cameron McAdoo hurt in practice. He and Kitchen crash into each other in the main. Then the Roxon wreck in the whoops we just talked about. Chase Sexton, broken throttle body. I don't know if he went short or long on that jump. It was just evil Knievel style. Anything that you could ask for in a bad way happened in Nashville. Yeah, it was a it was a tough weekend as far as uh, the Alpine Stars medical crew goes. They had their hands full. But you you wonder if a little bit was the, the low traction environment. We saw so many mistakes and mistakes typically lead to bigger crashes involving other people. So if that is the theme, if these really slippery racetracks are going to lead to this, well, look out because typically Denver and Salt Lake have this same dynamic. So it's hope for the best, but we may not be done with the chaos that ensues in this series. One rider feeling good though, Jet Lawrence. Now JT, you've been told this quite a bit that when the stakes are high, he rides his best. He kind of lived up to it here. Yeah, it's it's one of those things where if you're going to make these claims, if you're going to put this on him and say, this kid doesn't feel pressure. You know, I've been told specifically when the lights are their brightest, that's when he performs his best, which great. I'm here for all of that and I, and I will buy into that. But in these key moments, just like we saw in Nashville, the points are tied. You've given back 21 points to a rider you can't give those points to in Cooper Webb. You've got to show up, you've got to deliver, and he did it. He passed his way into the lead and showed he was the very best rider in Nashville. So I, it's okay with me. You want to make those claims, you've just got to back him up. Now, our next topic is Star Yamaha. This is the team that's been battling Jet Lawrence. Uh, Supercross, motocross, 250s, 450s, different riders, it's, whether it's Dylan Ferrandis and Justin Cooper or now Eli Tomac and Cooper Webb. They're going for it, and they've said all year long, their strategy is just try to keep him as close as possible and take advantage if he makes a mistake. Well, and Eli Tomac, he picked a uh, heck of a time here to put in one of his best rides because that rider right there, Cooper Webb, needs every single point available, and that cost him a couple of points. You know, I'm sure that fact's not lost on Cooper Webb. You know, I don't think he expects Eli Tomac to move over, but it does introduce an interesting dynamic here where this championship fight is going on that Eli Tomac's not in, yet he's inserting himself into the point scenarios that we can like weekends like Nashville. Yamaha is doing well in other facets, maybe not the individual rider standings, but in the manufacturer's points, they're still crushing it, pulling further and further away. Honda has leapfrogged Kawasaki. Uh, and actually it took a reminder, our man Clinton Fowler mentioned this to us, our statistician, Star Racing, normally their 250 dominance is what guides them, but it's actually been a little rough again in the individual series for Star this year. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's still a really strong showing by the Blue Crew, right? And, and the points are really tight here, so nothing has been won or lost, but these things matter. You know, th these are global brands and, and uh, just thousands of employees involved in propelling these riders forward. So it's something we don't talk about a lot, but you look at other sports, it is a very, very critical aspect of racing is who is the best manufacturer and Yamaha is leading that at the moment. Yeah, and that's again, taking the best 250 and 450 result each night. That's what totals those points. As for those individual title fights, yeah, now that gap is five points between Webb and Jet. Look, anytime I feel like Jet gets on a roll, it just starts looking so obvious that oh, he's the best guy, but we've already been fooled three times this year, four times this year. You think Cooper Webb's got another one in him? Well, Cooper's riding, and he would say, the best he's ridden in his entire career, right? So he has that opportunity. I think if he had kind of backed into this thing, if Jed had crashed his way back into the championship fold, that would be a very different scenario. But I, I think Cooper believes in himself and his ability to go out and win races right now. And make no mistake, to win this title, he's gonna have to do exactly that. He will have to win races over the next three rounds to become champion. But the, again, the good news for Webb is I believe he thinks he can. And, and how could you argue it with the way he's been riding over the past month or so? Okay, so still nothing lost. Still plenty of time. Three races, five points. That's not a very large margin. But I want to analyze how these races have been won and lost. And you and I disagree a little bit on this. I feel like all year the riders were saying, you got to sprint early. Jet so fast early. I can't let him get out front early. I got to put the pressure on him early. Well, boy, did they do that. I, even Webb, his 
first two laps he stayed with Jet. Roxon was unbelievable early as he usually is. And Eli Tomac was also unreal early on. So I feel like Jet Lawrence is like, go ahead guys, run as fast as you can. I'll just be jogging back here. And uh, once you guys are gassed, I'll just cruise on by. That's the way I saw that race unfolding. Yeah, and I don't know if it's so much that those guys are getting gassed. Um, you know, I think once Jet gets into a solid position on the first lap, I think he feels comfortable with kind of hanging out back there a little bit and letting the race unfold. And once he finds his rhythm, I think he just has more pace than anybody else. You know, he just is going to wait and not rush anything. Because if you look at the races where he's gotten himself in trouble, it's on the early lap, right? If he crashes, he gets into some sort of altercation, he gets a really bad start where he looks up and he's 12th on the first lap. That's been his problem. If he looks up on the first lap and he's second, third, fourth, he can just kind of let the race play out a bit. And once everybody gets a little bit of a gap and he can race guys one-on-one, -on -one, I think that's the perfect scenario for him. And he feels very comfortable going heads up against anyone. It's these high traffic scenarios where he's weaving in and out of people. People are taking cheap shots at him, like Jason Anderson, these guys that, let's face it, they I think they all want to be where Jet Lawrence is in their, in their careers at the moment, right? He's the new upstart. He's taking all the spotlight, the headlines. So they're going to take their shots when they can. That's the trouble spot. If you let Jet Lawrence be third on the first lap with really no one near him, that is a very, very scary scenario for everyone else because I think he has the most pace to deploy as the races and as the laps unfold. Off the sunset is Aaron Plessinger's Supercross season, unfortunately. It was so great early on. Uh, elbow injury is going to knock him out, suffered that at Foxborough. But there was some good news, JT, for Plessinger. Yeah, he gets a, a brand new contract. It's interesting to me that it's a one-year deal again, right? So I wonder what you know Red Bull KTM's long-term plans are. Are they keeping their options open for riders that may move up? You never know. Are they thinking about Levi Kitchen? Who are, who are they thinking about to where they would only give Aaron Plessinger a one-year deal? It, it's just an interesting thing. I don't have a, an answer for it. You know, I, don't ha I haven't drawn any conclusions, but we know in this sport, Two-year deals are typically the norm. If you're sure about your guy, it's typically a two-year deal. And this is two years in a row where it's been a one-year deal, which just opens the question, what is Red Bull KTM looking at down the road for 2026? Let's take it into the 250 East-West Showdown. Kitchen was the hottest 250 property coming into this race, I feel. And the key has been his unbelievable starts. It looked like he was going to have one. It went sideways in the heat race. And then lo and behold, Pro Circuit invents a even more heartbreaking way to lose titles when they crash into each other, McAdoo and Kitchen, in the main. Yeah, and I, and I feel like this is one of those scenarios where one misstep leads into a cavalcade of more missteps and things happening to you. It doesn't even have to be your fault. But if you get a poor start in the heat, right? He drifted wide in that first corner, opened the door for all those guys inside. That caused problems where he then went, I had to go around Josh Paris in that heat. Remember, he went off the track. That set him up for a poor gate pick in the main event, which then put him in a precarious position alongside Cameron McAdoo, who also had a poor gate position in the main event. So all these things really stem from something that happened earlier. And for Levi Kitchen, you have to look at that drifting wide in the first corner of that heat race, where it looked like he was dialed in and ready to continue that dominance. Everything else was just a domino falling from there. And then that leads to a huge change in the 250 West standings. Kitchen had a 15-point lead coming in. I believe if he whole shots that heat, Hampshire did not have a good start. I don't think Hampshire beats him in the heat. Hampshire is still scratching his head. Instead, Hampshire wins the heat and crushes the main. But we have to give RJ the do here, JT. He rode way better at Nashville than he did at St. Louis or Seattle. Yeah, I always say opportunities are important, but if you don't take advantage of the opportunity, then yeah, it, it's a it's a wasted chance, right? And, and RJ knew that, we talked about it all day long, is if the door opens, can you step up in the moment and walk through that door? And I don't think it's a whole lot different than the opportunity Cooper Webb has had, right? He cut the points lead from 21 down to even. And is he going to be able to take advantage of that over the next three rounds? The same situation is here for RJ Hampshire, who will now have the red plate going into Denver. Wow, that flipped in a hurry. <laughs> the press conference, Hampshire said, my confidence was drained after Seattle. Well, it's back now. And then 250 East, McAdoo's situation is even worse 
than Kitchens. Kitchens only two points behind, as you saw. But look at this. McAdoo back to third in points, 16 points down. Even if he can race Philadelphia, he's not 100%. This goes all the way back to an incident in practice with he and Logan Leitzel. Take me through this, JT. Is this just, oh, this is what McAdoo does. Dumb things happen. He blows titles this way. Uh, this was a practice crash. That's what started it. It's an unfortunate series of events. You know, for Logan Weitzel, I, I would say you can't drift into the race line when you know that Cameron McAdoo is going outside to, to roll triple there. That was an elite line that Logan Weitzel was not going to use. So you have to be mindful of where the top guys are going to be going. And for McAdoo, it's the same thing, right? If you see that guy start to drift, guess what? You have a front and a rear brake. Sometimes you have to use those. And yeah, I don't know that either of them are blameless here, but unfortunately, it really, really affected this East Coast Championship. Let's wrap this up again. Philadelphia will be a day race. Just want to remind you, 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time Saturday, race day live begins on the SMX Video Pass and Peacock. And 3 o'clock will be racing there and also live on NBC. So a great window into the sport. Hi, folks. Lee Diffie from NBC Sports here. If you truly enjoyed what you just watched, you can get more news, interviews, and highlights by subscribing to the Motorsports on NBC YouTube page. You can get it all, so go for it.